Okay, so I've had a lot of requests for a video going over um, the Super Jewel Ringer 3.0 and how to set it up, how to get it going. Um, I'm not going to go over the winding of the coil in this video. Um, these coils are really straightforward. Um, you just take, in this case, it looks like I have about a, I don't know, a 20 gauge enamel copper wire here. I wound the full length of this uh, ferrite rod, came back over it with a, um, what looks to be a 14 gauge wire, but a lot of these variables you can adjust and it depends on how many lights you want to connect. You know, if you're tuning a coil just to run one light bulb, you may want to build your uh, coil a little differently. And I'll go over how I tune to get the optimum efficiency for whatever the load I'm designing for is. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and point out one of the steps where I think a lot of folks could be going wrong and getting themselves in trouble and maybe burning out their transistor. Anytime I get ready to experiment with a new circuit, um, especially the more sensitive ones like a crossover circuit, uh, the first thing I do is I set my uh, power supply to a, a voltage, on, in the case of a Joule Ringer 3.0, around 10 volts. And then I limit my current down here to say 100 milliamps or so. You don't want this current wide open. Because if this is wide open and you have something hooked up wrong, you're definitely going to burn out your uh, transistor. So go ahead and limit the current down. If you don't have a power supply, um, I'll show you another way to, to do this with a battery. I would try starting the Super Jewel Ringer 3.0 with a 9 volt battery. And that way you will not be as likely to burn out your uh, transistors if you connect this to a regular 12 volt battery or something that can really deliver a lot of amps. But uh, anyway, we got that hooked up now. And we've got our circuit all set up here and uh, nothing's coming on. I can uh, tap the wires around, you know, there's just no no action whatsoever. Um, if that's ever your problem, what? and you can also see if I switch over here to the amp draw that we're pulling uh, no amps. So that's another thing I'd always check. And you can check that again if you have a battery with a little uh, ammeter in line. But we're pulling no amps and no action on the circuit. So the first thing I do when that happens is I come over here to my primary windings. This is your uh, the primary would be your larger uh, windings here. And I just uh, switch the connection on the primary windings. So all we're going to do is we're just going to reverse these uh, connection, these wires. And you can see we got light. Another point where a lot of people could uh, be going wrong, where you, may, you may just need to reverse the connection here, folks. All right, so we're pulling half an amp, and uh, it's just screaming away. So, say you don't have a power supply, and you, you have to troubleshoot shoot this same uh, scenario. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put these back up like they were. So, I'm going to do this again, and this time I'm going to connect to a 9-volt battery, because uh, maybe you don't have a power supply, but you don't want to blow out your transistor. This is just an old 9-volt uh, battery I had laying on the shelf, and we'll go ahead and uh, test with that one. So, I'm going to connect to here. Okay, nothing's coming on, and as before because this is uh, on the primary and I just need to flip these around but I'm going to just point out one other thing you could also flip around the connection on your secondary it doesn't really matter if you flip the secondary or the primary so in this case we're going to change the connections on the secondary and I'm going to do this on a different coil I think this will be a lot easier for you all to see on a uh, different coil but there we go we've got the light on our 9 volt battery no chance of burning out our transistor so then once you get the circuit working, then you can scale it up to, to larger loads and you may need to mount the transistor on a heat sink, especially if you're uh, running other types of bulbs. But Okay, so I just connected up to this one and we've got um, our connection to the primary windings here and to the secondary windings. And I'm going to go ahead and hook up the battery. I don't know if this is uh, oriented correctly or not yet, so let's just connect here. Okay, I'm not seeing any action on the circuit. So we can flip these two guys around, or we can do the, the two in the primary. In this case, I'm going to uh, switch the primary connections around. So we'll just connect the yellow down here and the red up to here. And you can see the uh, circuit came on. So that could be a major point of confusion if you're building a Super Drilling or a 3.0 circuit. So keep that in mind. You may need to, to flip that around. Now I'm going to just show you guys how I tune these. Um, to get as much light as possible. Okay, just want to show you how I tune a uh, jewel ringer circuit here real quick. 
So I've got this uh, coil set up. I just wound this, and I wound it with a uh, really soft, flexible, uh, silicone-coated RC uh, hobby wire. This is the wire I use in my RC projects. And uh, this wire you can get from Hobby King. The reason I use this when I'm tuning a circuit is I can wind and unwind the primary very easily. And once I figure out the, the right ratio, then I can replace it with some copper wire. But um, let's go ahead and connect up here. You can see the light comes on, but we're pulling, uh, let's see what our, what the amp bridge we're pulling is. See, it doesn't even bump. And this is a zero to two amp. It's not even bumping it, and we're getting very little light. So what I need to do, I need to unwind some of these uh, winds, and that's going to bump our light up and also increase our amp draw, and you'll find a sweet spot. So I'm going to go ahead, and uh, there's our brightness there. I'll just um, go ahead and take this, and we'll unwind a few winds. And that's the beauty of using uh, this, this type of wire, folks. You can really tune your coil easily. And uh, that's really important. You really want to be able to adjust these lines on your primary versus your secondary to uh, come up with something that works for what you need. And also what I do a lot of times, if I'm tuning to say six of these, then I connect six and I tune to that because the whole uh, secret to getting a really efficient jewel ringer is tuning the winding ratios to your load. So anticipate what your lighting load is going to be and you'll want to wind to that load. So you can see I've, un I've undone some winds here. We're pulling maybe a tad more amperage, although it's still pretty much hanging at zero. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, remove a much more, and we'll check again. Okay. You can see we're getting a lot brighter. The needle's still sitting on zero, but we're really starting to get some light out of the light bulb. So that's really the process of tuning. And at, at a certain point, uh, you'll see the volt or the amperage draw just really start to increase, and uh, that means you've gone too far. Uh, I had this coil testing earlier, and it was pulling two amps, and uh, that may also be a situation in which folks are burning out their transistors. You know, their winding ratios may be way off. So yeah, I usually start with a um, a lot of winds in my primary and work my way down. And then uh, as I get, oh, you can see, we just hit the jump. So now we're pulling one amp, and we're getting a lot of light. So at this point, now that, now that I've found the spot where this jumps and really, really comes on hot and bright, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up my um, light reader so I can read the uh, lumens from this lamp. And I got a little lux meter here. I'll find that, and we'll hook that up. And then I'm going to actually tune this to get the maximum amount of light versus uh, amperage. So we want a small amount of amperage, but a lot of light. And okay, so here's what I'm going to do to establish my baseline. So this is the most efficient uh, inverter I've found for a small inverter. It's the one I use in the Solon one version 3. And I've got it <clears throat> set here on my um, light meter. And I'm reading 320 um, on the 100 times lux. So that's the baseline. So if you look under uh, version 3 of the Solon 1, you'll see uh, that I've got the link to the swap meter. Really useful for experiments. Now the important thing to note is you have to come, you have to feed into here at the source, and then instead of just connecting your load to your inverter or whatever, go through a fairly large electrolytic capacitor, and that will help uh, you get a more accurate reading. So just uh, something to take note, especially when you're trying to take readings on a uh, Jewel Ringer device, it really helps you to get a much more accurate reading if you put the capacitor um, in line going down to your load. So anyway, this is our baseline. We're pulling 11.4 um, watts and we're getting 315 on our 316. Let's just say 315 on the light meter and 11 and a half watts. So that's where we're at, 315, 11 and a half watts. Now we're going to connect up the jewel ringer and we'll tune to try to beat this, to beat this uh, inverter. Okay, so now we're running the uh, jewel ringer here that we're tuning. You can see that we're at 305 on the light meter, so almost the same light intensity. 305 to 315 is very close. We're going to go ahead and try to get above. But we're pulling uh, 10 
9.9 to 10 watts. So significant drop in uh, in wattage usage and for almost the same light. Now I'm gonna going to go ahead and see if I can't tune this and and do even better. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, disconnect this. And we're going to undo a wind. We just want to at least hit the same light output that we were hitting with the um, with the other inverter and also try to save as much wattage as we possibly can. So let's see what we get now. So now you can see we're at 315, so we're right at the baseline, and we're coming in here at 10.5 watts. So we're getting the same amount of light, and we're saving one watt, and in this case I'm using a stranded wire which does not function as well and uh, you know this should be replaced with solid copper wire but beyond that um, I've only spent oh I don't know three four minutes tuning this um, to really come up with a a nice coil like one of these that will just totally smoke an inverter I do a fair amount of tuning I'll usually tune one of these things for I don't know 15 20 minutes and you have to you can't just adjust the primary winds when you're tuning for efficiency you have to adjust the number of secondary versus primary and I haven't really been doing that here but what I'm going to do now at this point to try to bring my efficiency um, or my watt load down even more is I'm going to begin to tweak the uh, secondary winds versus the primary winds. It's going to take a little longer but we're going to get this to a whole other level of efficiency.